I am here with Jin Yo of NOAA's National Weather Service, and we are currently entering the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season, um, as you might be able to tell from the very loud storm right behind me. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what you could tell us about this year's hurricane season. What makes it unique? What makes it different from previous year's hurricane seasons? Sure. Well, we were predicting a, an above average hurricane season in terms of the number of named storms. Uh, and in fact, we've actually increased that, uh, that forecast to being a, a, an extremely uh, high probability of ha having an active season. And the reason for that is the background conditions are really ripe for forming um, tropical storms and hurricanes. Those factors include having a, a really strong uh, East African monsoon, above average uh, water temperatures uh, in the equatorial Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, and relatively low wind shear. My wind shear, I mean, you know, the wind is going in two different directions uh, at different heights. You know, that, that kind of suppresses the tendency to, to make a hurricane grow vertically. But we don't have much shear, so the stage is really set for having um, uh, a lot of hurricanes form this year. Definitely. That gets a little bit exciting, but a little bit nerve-wracking. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm curious about us observing these hurricanes. So NOAA, which for those watching who might not know, is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, has made some recent improvements to some of its newer satellites. I'm curious why improvements were made to some of our monitoring satellites and how that's changing the way that we track storms, anticipate storms. Yeah, well, our satellites give us that large uh, scale view as, and right down to the small or smaller scale view of uh, the conditions that, that uh, in which hurricanes form. And we've made a number of improvements over years, over the years. These were all made in one year, but they're all kind of coming to bear now. So we have enhanced imagers at just much higher resolution. I mean, think about our digital cameras and how much better they are, the sharper pictures we get today versus 20 years ago. So we see more details of storms. We can see better where the central low for, for a hurricane is. And that's one of the first pieces of data that goes into the forecast prediction for how a hurricane is going to track. We also use uh, uh, satellites to measure, a variety of satellites actually, to measure the sea surface temperature. And like I say, it's that, it's that hot water in the ocean that kind of fuels hurricanes. We, uh, we look at the winds by, we, we track the, uh, the motions of clouds to see you know, what the wind speeds and directions are and whether those are, are going to favor the, the formation and uh, intensification of hurricanes as well. We use our imagers to look for uh, dust and what we call the Saharan air layer. That's one of those indications we get you know, of, of hot, dry air coming off the Sahara. And that's another piece that helps uh, fuel hurricanes possibly. Uh, finally, you know, we're, when we're looking at a system, we have uh, sensors that measure microwave and infrared radiation uh, in the system. That tells us about the temperature structure in there where we can't really, you can't go everywhere and put a thermometer in there or, or a, uh, a humidity sensor. So we find out how much water there's there, how much energy, the potential for rainfall. And then one of the newest things we have is the global lightning mapper that you know, measures lightning. And that, that tells us where there's severe storms going on inside that, that hurricane environment, uh, which is important because that can be linked to whether or not, uh, or to the likelihood of having intensification of that system. So we use all of those things together, both for our short-term forecast and in those longer-term predictions. So we spoke a bit about how NOAA and other organizations use satellites to track and monitor storms around the globe. Um, could you explain a bit how this tracking and monitoring actually reduces the real-life threat here on the ground? Well, of course, the, the, the key to reducing that threat is to have uh, to know what's coming and have time to make adequate preparations and to know exactly what the extent of those preparations will be. So we're looking to from the, those uh, observations to be able to make better forecasts of the track of a severe storm. So we'll know where it's going to make an uh, impact and when. You know, we want, want to know, you know, is that going to occur with a high tide or against high tide, you know, to, so we can run models to see how much storm surge to pre, um, uh, expect and whatnot. Uh, we want to know how strong the storm is going to be, how much of, a, of an area it's likely to cover so that we don't overwarn, but that we uh, 
have a, enough um, you know, adequate warning to the people who really do need to make preparations or even to evacuate and get out of the way are able to do so, or if they live in areas that are likely to be affected by inland flooding, you know, that they're aware, hey, I, I need to be watching those low-lying areas for, for flooding and those, uh, uh, in, in the event of heavy rains. Definitely. Um, so then you would say that, like, you know, these satellites and these monitoring systems, while it might seem indirect, by having those continually updated and monitored and used for this tracking is absolutely, you know, beyond critical for, you know, preparation and making sure that people are able to stay safe and know when to evacuate here on the ground. Exactly. I, mean, I think of it like as a, you know, as a stool, you know, if one leg is it long enough, you know, the whole thing is, is unstable. So you've got to have one leg that's the observations, another that's the science, uh, you know, that goes into the forecasting. Um, another piece of that then is the computers that, that run all this. You know, if you had all these data, but we didn't have computers to run the forecast, we'd be, uh, we, we'd have a problem as well. And then finally, the last part is that, you know, that, that part of the, the news media and the, and the local and state authorities and FEMA that make warnings and preparations, all those things have to work together in order to make, uh, make that go.